Good morning uh, in Asia, good evening in the US, good night if you're in Europe. Um, my name is Jasper Donat, I'm the CEO of Branded and welcome to everyone to All The Matters Online. Uh, normally we're in the Ritz-Carlton during the Singapore Formula One Grand Prix, uh, but now we are 100% online. Now that obviously means no croissants, no coffee, but there are some positives we can take out of it. There's no road closures this week. There's no jet lag. There's no hangovers that I'm responsible for. And there's no xylophone walking around bong, 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 continuously in the lobby. And remember, we don't have to wear socks. Um, this year, we are live and we are global, truly global. We have speakers and delegates who have come from all over the world, from America, from Europe, and from Asia. The stars have really come out for us this year. We have 180 speakers across 80 sessions, six tracks, five days, um, and a number of speakers who wouldn't normally be able to make it to Singapore. Uh, we also have a new track, Family Matters, which uh, we have uh, uh, really gone uh, into education and, and media, uh, and also encouraging our delegates to bring their kids to All That Matters, the same way that we would take our kids to music festivals. Um, the theme this year is connections that matter, and we have great networking around the Bizabo site, so please look around it, click around it. Uh, you have to have a connections pass for that, but there's some really cool uh, people should be meeting each other online. Um, we are 95% live this week, produced all over the world. Literally, the team from Branded right now is in Singapore, Hong Kong, Sydney, and the US right now. And amazingly, no two people at Branded right now are together in the same room as each other. So we, I think we all know that pitting events together has always been a pretty tough business and it requires a great team to pull together. Um, it's where the saying, it will all be, it'll be all right on the night, comes from, right? Um, we have a great team, but I have to say doing it from home individually brings a whole new level of tough. So I would personally, before we get going on All That Matters, I'd like to really acknowledge the team at Branded for getting us to where we are now and to wish them all luck and success for the rest of this week. Um, it's, been, it's been an interesting experience. Now, we have a jam-packed program um, and not too much time to walk you through it. The brief for all of our sessions is that we do not want to just be another webinar. Um, Every session has to be interactive, relevant, educational, future focused, and most importantly, we want to be useful and practical. So hopefully we've also added some magic where possible too. But yeah, the idea here is we just don't want to be another webinar. Um, some highlights just for, for the week. Today, uh, we're about to meet uh, six very important people and our first map it ever at All That Matters. Um, but also, later today, we have four great keynotes. Uh, Ole Oberman from, uh, Ola, sorry, Ola Oberman from the Global Head of Music from TikTok is with us. Uh, Edison Chen, Jamie Regal from Formula E, and a brilliant Live Matters panel at the end of the day. We've already done a reimagining live panel, uh, just a, a, like a town hall, and we've got music and uh, sport this afternoon as well. Very interactive sessions there. Tomorrow, we have Leo Cohen and none other than Chuck D joining us. And Wednesday, we wake up to the Wiggles and David Mamet. Thursday, the gamers are in the house. And then Friday is packed full of goodness. Uh, we also have some useful workshops, career sessions, uh, and uh, things like Life Matters with Sue Adams, how to raise money when there isn't any with, uh, uh, with uh, William Balbean, and a careers workshop with Helen at SRI. Um, seeing as we're live, there will be tech issues. Um, the last mile we cannot control, whether it's at my end, your end, the speaker's end. So please, we have done everything we can to test, test, and test again. Uh, but sometime there will be issues that are out of our control. And if there are, please do bear with us. Um, things will go right and things will go wrong. Please, your feedback is absolutely important. We are all learning right now. So please share your feedback with me and I will read literally everything. But the most important uh, message from us to you during these times of COVID is this show must go on and go on now it will. Um, so on to the opening session. 
for those of you who've been to All That Matters before, and by the way, it's absolutely pissing it down outside at the moment. Um, for those of you who come, who've been to All That Matters before, you'll know that this gives me a chance to speak to leaders from each of our uh, tracks uh, at All That Matters, music, sport, gaming, digital, and marketing, um, and an opportunity for people to peer over the fence of uh, the other, other industries in the room. Um, so this morning, uh, sorry, this afternoon, we have some wonderful speakers joining us, um, representing the marketing industry. We have Lynette Pang from the Singapore Tourism Board. Um, from the sports industry, we have Lim Tech Yin from Sports Singapore. From the gaming industry, we have Sunita Kaur from Twitch. From the music industry, we have uh, Calvin Wong from Universal Music, who attended the first ever Music Matters 15 years ago. And uh, a new face to, uh, to all the matters, representing both the Digital Matters and the Family Matters tracks. We have Sonali Khan from Sesame Street. So we're going to be hearing from each of these people before. But before that, I am a little bit trembly here because I think we have a bit of a world first here, maybe an Asia first, but it's a world first. Um, we have never had a Muppet appearing at All That Matters. And so, ladies and gentlemen, please give an incredibly warm welcome to our friend, everyone's friend, ladies and gentlemen, the Cookie Monster. Oh boy, oh boy. Mm. 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 I'm alive, me life. Ah, oh boy, oh boy, me life. Hello everybody, it's me Cookie Monster here. So let's begin the song. It goes, C is for Cookie, it's good enough for me. And C is for Cookie, it's good enough for me. And cookie, 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 cookie. Oh, me love singing me cookie song. Aha, I just for. What matters, uh, you've been an icon probably in pretty much every child's life around the world for so many years. Um, we don't know your actual age, um, but you taught me the alphabet cookie, so. You're looking pretty good for your age, and welcome to welcome to all that matters. Ah, uh, uh, thank you, Jasper. Thank you for having me at all that matters. Mm. So, so let's just jump straight in because I know you're a very busy muppet. Um, you've been around for a very long time, but Cookie, you still live with your mum. What do you tell your mum you do for a living? Ah, uh, Jasper, me been around for a long, long time. And me, me living with my mommy. And me into cookie baking business. In fact, me bakes cookies with my mommy. My mommy is my business partner. And we bake cookies together. Because lockdown or no lockdown, cookies never go out of business. Mm. Uh, cookie, you mentioned the, the lockdown here. Now, what have you been up to during the lockdown? And, and how have you been keeping yourself occupied? Oh boy, oh boy, uh, the lockdown. Mm. Uh, Jasper, during the lockdown, me keep myself fit, absolutely fit. Me exercise every day, me burn calories, me run, me exercise, then me again bake cookies, me eat them, then again me run, and me bake cookies again and again, and again me run. Hey, but also, me, me been binge watching Abby and Elmo on Sesame Workshop India's all new YouTube channel. Mm, it's a lot of fun. That, that's pretty exciting news, Cookie. Now, as you know, uh, All That Matters is a business event, um, and I'm fairly sure that a number of our attendees are very keen to know how Cookie Monster earns a living. So, so how does Cookie Monster keep cookies coming to his table? Ah, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, I just told you, Jasper, I helped my mommy in the cookie business, and that's what helps Cookie coming to the table too. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Mm. So, so Cookie, I know you've been, you, you, that you like to be out and about, and you were talking about uh, what you've been up to during lockdown, but 
How have you been connecting with your fans as well? This is a question we ask a lot of people is about their various fan connections. Ah, uh, Jasper, my friend, we may be physically distant and far from each other, but we all are connected through our hearts, just like how me and you are connected right now. Me video call and talk to my friends and fans and make sure they all are doing fine during this lockdown and me also have play the friends and guess what me also have a play date with elmo on the 18th of september right here at all that matters conference i hope you will be joining in jasper and getting me some delicious cookies mm. I, I certainly will and i'll hopefully be eating them with you as well cookie um what has been the highlight uh, of your year Ah, highlight of my ear. Ta-da! <laughs> it's being right here at the All That Matters conference. And then I'm also going to have a lot of fun with Elmo and Abby on YouTube. Oh, me so happy to be here at All That Matters conference. Wow, such wonderful people here. And especially, it's so wonderful to meet you, Jasper. Well, you seem like, an, you seem like a nice guy. <laughs> I hope you will get me. Cookies. Ah. Uh, I will certainly do my best, Cookie, and I'm certainly uh, one of your largest fans. Um, final question for you, mm -hmm. Cookie. Um, uh, as I say, we've all grown up with you. We've all learned so much from you. Um, but if you could, what advice, and this is a question that we give a lot of people, what advice would you give your younger self? <sighs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Now, now, that's an interesting question you asked, Jasper. Wow, what a question. Hmm, well, you see, Jasper, me cookie monster, a forever young monster, and me getting younger and younger every day. So, me give advice to my younger self to be more kind and loving and spread more joy around the world. And of course, learn to make and bake more delicious cookies and never leave a cookie unattended, no matter where you are and what you're doing. Mm. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, the message is clear. Uh, cookies matter, Muppets matter. Um, please do not go away. Cookie, thank you so much for joining us. Please don't go away. Uh, you're gonna come back and join us uh, with the rest of the panel a, 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 little bit, a, a little bit later, but Cookie Monster, thank you so much for making my life and making my career and joining us at All That Matters. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, um, to follow that, we have a globally renowned marketer. She's the head of marketing for the Singapore Tourism Board. And actually, a longer story, but she's the reason we're here in Singapore, uh, going back almost 11, actually over 11 years now, um, to get a bit of insight into pe what people will be talking about around the Marketing Matters track. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Lynette Pang of the Singapore Tourism Board. Hey, Lynette. Hey, Jasper. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm completely starstruck from talking to you <laughs> and to Cookie and, and, and all of the people on this panel. So for once in my life, I'm quite nervous. But, but Lynette, thank you so much for joining us. And, and as ever, for the Tourism Board's ongoing support of everything that we do uh, at, at All That Matters. Um, but we want to talk to you first about marketing, and then we want to talk a little bit about what's going on in Singapore, apart from the rain. Um, Lynette, how, how has the role of a marketer really changed during uh, the pandemic? Mm. Well, before I answer that question, um, Jasper, big congratulations on your 15th year of All That Matters. It's no small feat, and is really true your vision and your you know tenacity, so congratulations. Um, back to your question. Um, well, I would say from a macro basis, the role of a marketer has not really changed. If you look at the fundamentals of what a, a marketer would do, it would be around brand building and awareness. It would be around engagement. And of course, what's really important is driving business objectives, uh, for example, through performance marketing. But I think there has been shifts due to the pandemic, for example, in the area of brand. Um, a brand might dial up different messages. So, for example, one of the key things that we've had to communicate is really um, this whole 
all the work that we're doing around safety. For us, opening safely is very, very key. And pre-pandemic, it was about creating a great experience for the visitor. And during this pandemic, it's about creating a very, very safe environment for the consumer. So communicating all the effort that the destination is putting in place to create a safe Singapore has been paramount. Um, and of course, uh, we too need to um, communicate to the visitor that while you can't come to Singapore, you can still enjoy Singapore in an innovative way virtually. So this is where the shift in engagement comes. Um, previously, perhaps it's about engaging audiences more deeply, about understanding the destination. But today it's about how can we play a role in developing interesting content, which is what all that matters is about in terms of educating them about Singapore in a fun way, how to cook laksa, or entertaining them by exposing them to uh, musicians from Singapore or other different acts. And of course, last but not least, in terms of driving business outcome, I think marketing um, has a very big role in working with stakeholders and businesses in innovating with them to drive new business models for the virtual world. So from a macro basis, it's largely the same, I would say small shifts within uh, the roles of marketing. So, so, so it's clear that, uh, and by the way, cooking, cookie, laxa, but you also want to teach people how to cook Singaporean cookies as well. Um, you're, obviously, the tourism board has has evolved greatly in it in its um, in its in, in its marketing. I mean, you think about tr travel along with uh, you know events and hospitality is, is possibly the worst hit by the pandemic of all. Um, and you were talking about evolving. How is your, rather than just the tourism board, how has your role evolved uh, over the past over the past few months? I would say the role. Well, maybe you can draw it in the context of what the focus is on. I think pre-COVID and pre-pandemic, the role was very much focused on a global international audience. And with travel much pretty much um, being put on hold, in order to help the industry survive, the focus has shifted to the domestic audience. So I would say one of the biggest shifts for myself is um, the shift to focus on domestic audiences and understanding their needs and helping local businesses. So that's one. Um, I think the other shift or evolution um, or maybe a greater emphasis has been on, I would say, team with the constant changes and i'm sure everybody in this call um, is going through that and has gone through that and that is things change by the second and with this change it has um, really made us we have to force ourselves to be more fluid in how we work with each other to have a more agile method of working and really to be more of a team player and more borderless within stb um, within um, STB in Singapore in our global offices, across the government, as well as uh, between STB, the Singapore Tourism Board, and our stakeholders in Singapore. So we've really had to come together, break down borders, and work as one team to solve problems fast, as well as to create new innovative experiences and products so that we can move on strongly. Um, I could I could talk to you forever about um, being a marketer and the challenges you face because I know how hard you, you and, and some of the amazing successes you've had this year. By the way, we we did the wonderful Music Matters live from home with the Singapore Tourism Board through yes. the summer, gaining 10 million views for artists around the world. So very proud of that. Um, I, I just want to shift gears a little bit or into Singapore as an event destination uh, and Singapore as a des destination. We're talking about the live industry earlier today and later this afternoon. Um, and I wonder if you could share some highlights into what you think is going to be possible for the um, event industry uh, in, in, in the coming uh, months and, uh, and into the future. Last week, um, there was an announcement that Singapore is accepting applications for organizers to pilot MICE uh, events of up to 250 people from, I think, October the 1st. 
Um, are you able to share any highlights of what you think might be possible for the event industry towards the end of this year? Well, um, I think firstly, one key thing that I would like to emphasize is that events and business events are um, of, of great strategic importance to Singapore. Um, and two, from 1st October onwards, we allow for applications um, for companies to apply to be on a pilot basis for events not more than 250. So I think the biggest shift that many of us are looking forward to, and I'm looking forward to having all that matters in Singapore soon, okay, um, is really the shift from virtual to hybrid to live events in Singapore. So what's happening in the next couple of months is there's going to be a lot of pilots so that we can find out what works so that we can learn and we can iterate and get better. So um, between September, October, all the way to December, there are a couple of exciting events. For example, in October, there's going to be web and travel, a travel event uh, that's going to be in a hybrid form with, I think, 50 participants and a couple of other events, for example, um, travel Revive, powered by STB and ITB in November. In October, we have an International Energy Week. So really, I think what we can look forward to would be pilots to test to see how we can formulate the new hybrid event safely, because the safety of our delegates is key. It's very exciting. I mean, um, the in the Reimagining Live session earlier this morning, there was a the general feeling was that people really do, they want to be safe, but they want to get out again and, and people do want to be at events. Then the, 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 It's not just about being online like this week. Uh, so hopefully hopefully we'll be back in, uh, in venues by the end of this year and Lynette, hopefully we'll be back at the Singapore Grand Prix at the Ritz-Carlton this time uh, next year. But for now, Lynette, please don't go away. We're going to uh, come back to you, but thank you so much for joining us and again for for your support as, as ever. Um, up next, we are going to sport. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, Lim Tech Yin, the CEO of Sport Singapore, uh, a, a, a great organization that we've worked with for many, many years around our Sports Matters program. Um, Tech Yin, I'm not saying this because you're online, but you really are a genuine visionary. I've always enjoyed our conversations. You, so many ideas that we deliver come, come from you. Um, uh, we are speaking tomorrow uh, more about the work that Sports Singapore is doing uh, in the community with, with athletes and the industry and, and businesses in Singapore. But, but today I'm talking to you with a, an industry hat on as a, as, a, as a whole, looking at the live industry, the media industry, the technology industry, the athletes and fans. Sport, again, is one of the worst. I mean, there aren't that many industries that haven't been badly affected, but sport's been pretty badly affected by the COVID situation. Um, what is going on uh, in the sports business today? Um, and what would you like to see discussed uh, through the Sports Matters program all week? Well, thank you, Jasper, and thank you for having me on uh, All That Matters. Um, you know, it's about seven years ago, uh, I believe, when uh, Stacey Allister, who was at that time the CEO and chairman of the WTA, uh, spoke at all that matters and said that uh, it you know sport was was really now experiencing a, a much stronger nexus with the world of entertainment and I think since that time we have always been engaging in discussions about what else we needed to do what what sort of creativity and innovation needed to be injected in sport um, because uh, we were faced with other sort of disruptors. Right. The broadcast world was being disrupted by the online world. Uh, we were seeing uh, lower attendances at some of the uh, live events that were being staged around the world. And in developing sport markets, there was always the challenge of trying to get people out from their living rooms into the stadia. Um, but this time around, I think COVID-19 has been the disruptor of all disruptors. What you have uh, always called the Napster moment uh, that music had sort of experienced years ago, it has suddenly hit us. And what does that mean? Um, our way of life has been disrupted. You know, you could talk about many innovations in sport, but nothing has sort of changed things the way COVID-19 has changed our way of life. And so even as we contemplate our future, 
uh, we recognize that the strong commercial interest in sport uh, has what uh, drove the resumption of sport activities, in some cases despite uh, concerns of public health. And I think it presents an opportunity then for everyone in the sport industry to think about what's new and what must take place to be able to engage fans. By all accounts, um, I think uh, viewership for sport has remained strong on the different broadcast channels. I think the, the, the data shows that people still want to watch. Uh, I, I certainly take away from the commentary over the weekend's match between Leeds United and Liverpool uh, that there's been strong interest from the fan base to watch these games. Uh, but the question is whether we will be able to sustain such fan interest if we continue to present sport the way we've traditionally uh, presented it. And what I've been seeing in various commentaries has been conversations around uh, how we need to generate greater interest, greater interest in fan engagement, perhaps uh, drawing from many examples, again, from the entertainment world. Uh, some commentators have suggested that uh, sort of uh, fan interest now may need to take precedence over sport rules in being able to engage fans. So whether more reality TV, uh, whether uh, greater innovations in getting into the uh, fan content creation space in order to create that level of interest uh, to tell a story around sport. So, and I think that this is certainly a space to watch uh, and it's going to be a very interesting space and will require rights holders, host cities, coaches and even the athletes themselves uh, to work together even more strongly uh, to be able to get to the fan. Um, and and, and uh, I mentioned earlier that um, y you, know, you and I have discussed many, many things over the years. And I think back in November last year, following last year's All That Matters, um, you had the idea of focusing on sports tech and new tech. Um, now, this was obviously way pre-COVID, so it was COVID and talk about being a visionary, but you know, we, we've now actually created a whole track on Wednesday called Sports Tech Matters. Um, it, it seems that there are some positives coming from the sports tech industry. Well, I, I think uh, sports tech has been big for, for quite a number of years, and it was great for companies in the sport industry who had been spending a lot of time thinking about uh, technology development, not just from the perspective of getting more data, but in actually thinking about how you would engage your fan uh, 360 and 365 days a year. Uh, you know, we've, we've participated in webinars where one championship spoke about how it has looked at itself as a media company and how then in staging its live events, it hoped to be able to get onto every single device uh, in order to have the broadest reach. Uh, when COVID-19 struck, those companies that were typically already like one championship experimenting very much like, for example, the ATP uh, that stages a very successful ATP next-gen competition uh, that reaches to the fans uh, at home through social media, brings that to the court, makes that part of the live entertainment I think those type of technologies and the internet of things is making things quite interesting for these companies. And many more need to be able to get on that. In the mass participation space, uh, we're seeing a lot more possibility for blended events and to be able to create an experience for participants, even though we're not gathering in big numbers. Uh, so I do think uh, that sports tech is going to be uh, largely a very strong focus for many of the companies. I think 5G technology is going to make some very interesting innovations possible. Uh, but one thing I, I think uh, needs to happen is there needs to be some fundamental shifts in mindsets uh, from everybody, from moving from taking a traditional sport event mindset and then trying to see how to innovate from that uh, to really turning it on its head and say, well, what can the tech do that sport can adapt to? Um, <clears throat> I, I think final question, Tech Yin, and, and it's probably an unfair question, but um, where do you think the sports industry is going to be at the end of this year? And then looking out into the future, where are we going to be at the end of next year? 
I think there, there are still significant uh, legacy mindsets in the sport industry so that by the end of this year, there will still be a lot of people waiting and wishing for COVID-19 to go away. I think the reality that we are needing to build a lot more resiliency in our industry is going to take root uh, by early, middle next year, where the sort of ecosystem shifts and the dynamic between the different stakeholders in the sport industry will become a lot more apparent. So we're moving very quickly from let's bring it back, let's try to see how we can mitigate uh, what's going on with COVID-19. Let's start to engender conversations about greater creativity and innovation in this space. And then pretty soon, the sort of dynamics between the different stakeholders in the industry are going to play out. But I'm optimistic that sport being what it is, uh, will think about this uh, for the longer term in terms of how we build greater resiliency in the industry. Because if this pandemic is uh, anything to go by, uh, and all the commentators on pandemic suggest that this is going to come and go, uh, we have to make our shifts. And we have, not to, we have to take our heads out of the sand and begin to have conversations around what does it really mean to build greater resiliency. Um, Tech Yin, thank you so much for your time. We are talking again tomorrow about your day job, um, but uh, but for now, please don't go away. We're gonna we're gonna have you back here in a in a second. But but thank you so much for for your time there to talk about the sports industry. Um, up next, now I uh, we like asking people the question of uh, like we ask Cookie. Um, what do you, uh, what, what, what advice would you give to your 15 year old self? And the one thing I always say is get into gaming. Um, and so we're very lucky now to have uh, the head of Twitch in Asia Pacific, uh, Sunita Kaur. Are you there, Sunita? I am. Hey, Jasper. Hey, Sunita. Now, um, thank you so much for joining us. This time last year, you were in the music industry. Now you're in the gaming industry. <laughs> Um, how has the gaming industry really fared since this time last year? Um, well, let me begin by saying thank you so much for having me on Twitch uh, as part of All That Matters. It's, it is definitely an interesting year. I've spent the last seven years um, of ATM on the music stream. So this year I start with the gaming stream. And what a, what a time to start a new gig. Um, you know, we look at what is happening on the gaming front in Asia Pacific. And I think there's no doubt that it has grown tremendously in the last years, let alone the last 12 months. And I think with the gaming stream um, at ATM this week, you know, you're going to hear a lot about growth. You're going to hear a lot about numbers. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about how you know the gaming um, industry has evolved and how a lot of the platforms have evolved with non-gaming content. I think that will be a, a big theme. And even for us at Twitch, you know, when we just delve into the numbers uh, and a big part of why we've set up our APAC HQ out here in Singapore is there are 1.3 billion people in the Asia Pacific region that identify themselves as gamers, whether it's you know hardcore or just casual gamers. Now that is 63% of the entire online population. So if you take a step back, that's a very, very large audience. And you have you know an audience that's made up of creators, of viewers, building very, very loyal, large communities. Um, on all of the gaming platforms. So it's, it's a big responsibility, but we're also seeing very, very cool stuff coming out of there. You know, watching gaming is, is, is a big part um, of the experience, but I think what we're having the most fun with is seeing how this is evolving. You know, we've got wonderful stories very recently of, for example, a, um, a gamer in Australia called Pestily, who uses or used his stream to raise over a million dollars for uh, the Starlight Children's Foundation. So there's this wonderful 
gaming for good movement uh, that is coming up. Uh, in terms of you know non-gaming uh, content, one of my favorite streamers right now is Brox, who is a woodcarver from New Zealand, who is just so incredibly sweet and just so engaging that last week the Prime Minister of New Zealand dropped into his Twitch stream and had a go at at wood carving herself. So you know there's just there's a lot of of communities that are coming together, especially in a time like this. Um, and that's a really nice thing to see. Um, and, and, and what do you think are some of the highs of, uh, of 2020 for the, for the gaming industry? Well, I mean, a very obvious high has been growth for, for everyone. Um, you know, even when we look at uh, what we've seen across APAC at Twitch, the hours watch have grown 1.5 times, the number of broadcasters in the Asia Pacific region, and I think this is very interesting, has doubled in the last 12 months. So you've got more and more people coming onto Twitch to use the platform to broadcast content. Um, you know, other interesting things we've seen is, well, no surprises here, you know, about four weeks since social distancing came into play, Hours watch grew by 57%. So, you know, people were looking for a platform to go to for, for company and for community. And we were proud to play a, a small part in that. But again, you know, a lot of fun is being had in the, in the organic growth of non-gaming content where we've seen lots of sport and lots of music come into play. So I think overall the, the, the community is just getting bigger and bigger. Um, can we talk about 2021 um, going into next year and uh, what does it look like for the gaming industry and what does it look like for, for Twitch? Well, I think overall the gaming industry, it's, it's definitely going to continue to grow. For a lot of us and, and definitely for us at Twitch, it will be um, being able to service the communities better. A big part of what we will be doing um, is around product. So for example, last week, we just announced a new product called Versus. And in the gaming community, you know, eSports is no doubt very large. So this is a set of tools that uh, creators can use to organize and manage their own tournaments. So I think putting um, that, that set of tools in the hands of the, of the creators and the broadcasters is going to be a lot of fun to watch in 2021. Uh, very recently, you know, we've been excited to have Shroud um, and Ninja back on Twitch with us. So that's, uh, that's an exciting time for us as well. And um, again, just I think more and more uh, exciting behaviors that we'll see from from the gaming community and the sports community and the music community as well. Um, I mean, there, there are some amazing numbers out there for, for the gaming industry, but what, what, what do you think your largest challenges to success remain in, in Asia Pacific? Well, you know, looking back, I think, again, just on the last 10 years, um, when, you know, we saw social media come into our world and then music streaming come into our world and now there's this whole new world of gaming and, and live streaming it is a time of more voices coming into play so you know twitch has been around for a while but what we will see especially in apac is more and more companies uh joining either the gaming or the live streaming uh, world. And so competition will be high, but competition is great because the more voices you have coming onto the platform, the more companies and people you have talking about live streaming, the more it's going to help all of our industries altogether. So I think 2021 is going to just be even more growth and even more interesting tools and behavior. Well, look, th thank you. Thank you, Sunita, for joining us and uh, for being our, our 
streaming partner this week as well. Um, and, and good luck for for the rest of this week and obviously the rest of the year. And, and hopefully we'll see you uh, back at, in uh, live at the Ritz-Carlton uh, this time next year. Don't go away. We're going to come back to you again. Um, up next is music and where it all started uh, back in 2006 with Music Matters. This is where I start pointing to things behind me. Um, and uh, we're very fortunate. Calvin Wong, the head of all things Universal Music, uh, in Southeast Asia has joined us, one of our original speakers from 2006, um, and where you famously uttered the words, it's the music that matters. Uh, Calvin, great to see you again. Uh, we did a lot with you, we had a lot of parties with you, a lot of showcases uh, this time last year in, in Singapore, but how has the music industry fared since, since we last saw you at Music Matters uh, in 2019? I think, uh, hi, hi, morning. Um, similarly to what uh, Sunita has gone through, uh, the music business hasn't, in general, the, our core business hasn't really been affected that badly um, from the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Uh, we have seen the grown, we have grown slightly from uh, a year before, uh, but the, the growth is obviously not as uh, not as uh, dramatic as the year before, but it's, it's positive. Uh, however, on, on the downside is that obviously live business, the artist management business and the brand's business has suffered, uh, but uh, it's slowly coming back to some level of normalcy uh, in the last couple of months. And, and we are positive that uh, these will continue to become better in the, in the coming months. So yeah, it's, uh, is is been it's been okay it's been okay so 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 what are the highs for 2020 and what are the lows for 2020 are you talking about universal highs there's quite a lot do it do we have the time <laughs> i'm just kidding i think uh, on 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 <laughs> On Universal, I think since the, the last uh, All That Matters last year, we make a few big announcements, uh, you know, including Def Jam, launching Def Jam in the region. Since then, we've signed like 26 artists in all six Southeast Asia countries. We've launched Astroworks in the region and we signed a wonderful act, which will be part of the, the All That Matters program called Weird Genius from Indonesia. Uh, and, and a few other initiatives like spin up and uh, to look at new talent and in groups as well. So, so from Universal, we have been extremely uh, aggressive, uh, especially in, in signing more talent from, from this region. So as far as, far as the market is concerned, I think uh, the, the highs is definitely the growth of uh, domestic music consumption has definitely uh, changed uh, quite a bit in the last, last year or so. So, so, so you're saying more people are listening to more local music? Absolutely. And uh, not just local music, but music from around the region. The, the Asian region has, uh, has actually grown. I mean, obviously, everybody knows about the K-pop phenomenon, uh, which I'm not going to go into. But even now, you start to see talent from... I mean, we, we, try and, we, try and, we, we did a good promotion run on a, on a Thai artist called Violet uh, Vautier. And it has tremendous uh, uh, response from the region. And that was kind of like our little experiment to try and see whether talent from, from Southeast Asia can actually make its mark uh, in, a, in a bigger context of, of the industry. And, and we're excited to see the response has been like a lot, lot more favorable than it would be like, let's say two, three years ago when, when every time you say, oh, we have an artist from Thailand, they'll be like, yeah, whatever, give me back my, Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift. You know, now they're like they're more accepting to this new talent uh, coming from within the region. And uh, I mean, it's largely uh, related to whether the video quality production from this region has grown, the music uh, production has grown, uh, the talent has actually acquired more and more capability, uh, and the gap between uh, the quality from the West and the quality from from this part of the world is 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 beginning to to grow smaller and smaller. So. So yeah, I mean, the, that has been something really, really positive. So, so, so the gap is shrinking. That's, that's really interesting. Now, I know that um, for you personally, artists really matter most to everything. And there, there are, we have quite a few sessions this week uh, with artists and for artists and about artists. 
Um, artists really have had to take control of their destiny in a, in a, a lot of cases through COVID. Um, are there any artists that you have been particularly admired, that you, sorry, you have particularly admired who, who have managed to grasp the situation and maybe succeed? I mean, how, how, how do you mean? I mean, like a lot of our artists has actually uh, worked very closely with us in terms of managing through these difficult times. Um, obviously, the production level of uh, our artists has grown tremendously, and not just us, but the industry as a whole, because there's less traveling abroad, there's less going on the road. So they're, they're spending more time, you know, uh, uh, cooked up in in a, a home studio or, or their, you know, or, or recording studios, just making great music, you know, and 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 as a result, it, it gives us more ammunition for us to really bring it to to their fans, to to potential audience uh, on a global basis, not just uh, uh, on on a local basis. With with the way the music business is growing now, there is there is almost seems like fraudless. So. So it's really the quality of music has has risen from this COVID nineteen, and and uh, for us, for example, we, we are super excited with the development of Young Raja from Singapore, uh, uh, where over the the last few months uh, uh, his popularity has gone leaps and bounds with excitement coming from uh, we, we signed him to an American label now. Uh, uh, where he was released, he will be represented in, 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 in America. We also got representation from him in India as well. And we have some very exciting collaboration coming up. All this is not possible, like even a few years ago, but now these are the things that excites me the most in terms of artists and, and what he can actually do in the coming, coming, coming months. So, so, so final question for you. And again, I think this is on behalf of the industry. Um, we've, we've talked to a few of your colleagues on this session uh, from other industries about what they think 2021 might look like. Um, is, is it much of the same or are there any new initiatives or technologies or anything new and exciting coming up that you think uh, might change the, the conversations that we have this time next year? Well, technology has always been a big part of the music industry from, you know, 97 when, you know, uh, uh, when the whole digitization of music uh, come to fall, Sean Fanning, you know, uh, completely transformed the music industry, and and to today, uh, where it's no longer about transaction of CD sales, but consumption of music, and uh, the the rise of uh, super fans, for example, has become more and more important, uh, and 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 the method of music being promoted will always continue to evolve whether right now the biggest trend obviously is TikTok but there would be something exciting and new on the horizon which we may not even know about it yet but the, the key for us in the music industry is can we evolve can we react quick enough to really adapt to the situation I think we can and I think as an industry we 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 have become very very agile in terms of accepting new things so so this is not like something new we've gone through you know a lot of pain in the in the last uh, 15 20 years of from a physical business to a digital business and we're ready to take on anything exciting if, it, if there's anything that we should be looking out for is really about talent is really about the ability for Southeast Asia talent especially because I'm in Singapore to really go to places that we have never thought you can explore in the past. And that is the one that will keep me awake at night uh, in, in the next few months or hopefully in the next year. You'll forgive me for, for smiling, but just as you said, the future is bright. The most enormous bolt of lightning just landed straight outside my house. And I know you're just down the road from me as well. So that was quite, so someone's let, let me, let me, um, let me show this. The future is bright. I've got to wear shades. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great Calvin now Calvin again please please don't go away thank you so much for uh, for sharing your your uh, inspiration your, your insights and inspirations with us uh, for the last the last 12 months and the next 12 months for the music industry uh, and then finally ladies and gentlemen uh, a new face to all that matters um, for those of you who don't know if you've been on Mars without a TV um, the Sesame Workshop 
is a non-profit organization behind Sesame Street. It reaches over 180 million children and nearly 52 year olds uh, <laughs> across more than 150 countries with research-based, tested and proven educational in interventions designed to help kids grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. Well, I've certainly learned my alphabet. I don't know if I got smarter. Um, so um, we're very, very fortunate. Sonali, uh, Sonali, thank you so much, by the way, for uh, being behind bringing Elmo and Cookie. So, so Cookie Monster had earlier, Elmo is going to be appearing throughout the week live as well at All That Matters. Uh, but Sonali Khan, thank you so much. You must have um, the best job in the world. Tell us a little bit more about not just not just Sesame Workshop, but but Sesame Street in India. Uh, thanks, Jasper. This is really an amazing uh, you know uh, platform for us to talk to sort of so many so many people. I mean, this morning I'm just taken uh, taken aback by the panel coming from sports, from marketing, from music, uh, from gaming. And I think all of these worlds converge at Sesame Street, right? We are all about fun, music, and children. Uh, I, I do agree when I joined Sesame, I, I just pulled this out to show you how I was greeted into Sesame. So this was the visiting card I got. And I said, oh my God, is this the reason why I joined Sesame? Because Elmo's on my visiting card. So <laughs> you can just imagine uh, you know, the fun. Uh, so Sesame uh, Workshop in, in India is is uh, actually uh, up to some great stuff because, as you all know, uh, COVID has meant children are at home. Uh, so Sesame has got actually busier than ever before. Come April, uh, we found ourselves pivoting because we realized children are more and more at home. So we really need to uh, reach children as much as we can. So, so Sesame Workshop is now big on YouTube. Uh, we are really uh, pivoting with more content. Uh, we in April actually came up with what we call caring for each other. This was our initiative to uh, to reach out to children at the time when uh, things were you know uncertain and and even now it's uncertain, right? So Sesame Workshop India is really trying to look at three things: how to bring about continuous education. Of course, the initial stages we really reached out to kids on prevention of COVID. Uh, I think. Uh, Many people didn't understand that children were just absorbing things around them and they needed to be talked to and uh, addressed and explained about COVID. So Sesame really stepped in. And finally, I think the biggest thing we are doing now is about social emotional well being. Uh, this is really important to note because, as you beautifully introduced us, Jasper, that we are all about making kids smarter, stronger, and kinder. I think now, uh, what will matter is more than ever is kindness. And I'm just so excited to be a part of the Family Matters uh, stream because uh, as families, as individuals that are part of families, not just our own little family, but a part of the global family, we just need to know how to be kinder to ourselves first and then to everybody else. So yeah, uh, so Sesame Workshop India is trying to bring all of these uh, beautiful things uh, to, to this region. What, what a lovely, I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm going to say this. We've got five more days of, of this, but how cool is that starting with, with a message that kindness matters? I mean, so I've got, I'm going to have a big grin on my face now for the rest of the week. Um, Sonali, my, my new best friend in the world ever, Cookie Monster, um, mentioned that you have a, an exciting launch coming up. Are you able to talk about that? Sure, sure. In fact, I think we will. Uh, the soft launch has already started. We took the opportunity of uh, all uh, all things matter to actually launch the SESP Workshop India YouTube channel. Uh, by uh, it will really start putting out just amazing international content in languages that uh, children in India understand Hindi to begin with, and then a couple of more uh, regional languages, bringing international content uh, like never before. Because I think that's really important uh, that children learn with fun. So our YouTube channel uh, is going is going live very. It's already live, so you can catch us on Sesame Workshop India YouTube channel, which will feature more and more new content and come October every week we'll be premiering content. So this is exciting for us. Uh, and I think it's come at a time when we and everybody's spoken just before me how digital access and how everybody has gone in line and and it's not surprising India has seen 
I mean, it's unbelievable how much uh, trillion min uh, you know seconds of downloads and content has is being consumed in this country. Our, our data cost is probably the cheapest, and children are accessing. Uh, I know there are concerns about screen time. Parents are worried, but then you know uh, this is this is something we'll have to deal with in the new normal. And you've been asking about what that really means. So I think I love the word about you know blended events, a new hybrid. Uh, they just you know very interesting terminologies that are going to just overtake our lives. So yes, uh, we are looking forward uh, to the next not just few weeks, months, but the next year. Well, Sonali, as I say, you have one of those jobs that everyone wants, and, and uh, but thank you again for, for everything you've done in bringing. <laughs> well, th and, and yeah, thank you so much for, for bringing uh, Cookie and Elmo to to all that matters this week. Basically, no one, by the way, no one believed that it was the real Cookie and Elmo, and no one believed that they're live. So hopefully, we can now we've now proven that they're live. So, so look, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring uh, hopefully everyone back that's been on this opening panel. We've got about four minutes left uh, for, for the session. Um, thank you so much to all of you. Um, now we're going to ask a couple of couple of more personal questions. None of this, none of this industry, industry nonsense. Um, and uh, we might be joined by another friend shortly soon as well. Um, but uh, I, 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 what, what I'm going to ask, let's, let's go back to the start again. Lynette, um, What's one thing you're doing now that you weren't doing uh, pre-COVID? A lot of people talk about making sourdough bread and stuff like that. Are you making more cookies? Well, I'm eating way too much. <laughs> um, well, uh, what I'm doing more of, one different thing that I'm doing is I'm now able to have lunch with my kids when they're back from school. And that really matters to me because, you know, it's about spending quality time when they're young. So, yes, lunch of kids. Fantastic. Same question to Tech Yin. What are you doing now that you weren't doing uh, this time last year? Well, trying to get outdoors a lot more, visiting places I've never visited, like farms out at the western side of Singapore, and always remembering, and I think Sesame Street just reminded me once again, uh, it's about having fun, and through fun, expressing a lot more kindness. Nice answer. Sunita, what are you doing now that you weren't doing uh, before? Gosh, well, um, I have to admit, I've never been so disciplined and structured in my life. So that's been um, um, a very new part of, of my day. And uh, the highlight of my day has definitely been um, from 12.30 to 1.30 every day. There's this four of us girls that have been friends since we were seven years old. And we have a, a, a yoga Zoom class because we live all over APAC. So it's a nice break in the day to get in a little bit of exercise and, and stay connected with people that you love, which is so important for your sanity. Good, very, very nice point. Calvin, what are you doing now that you weren't doing a year ago? Lots of Zoom calls that I never did before <laughs> COVID. That's for sure. And then uh, I get to spend so much time with my wife. I've never had spent so much time with my wife uh, in my entire career because I travel so much. Now I can't travel, so I have to see her every day, which is a good thing. And, um, and uh, lastly, uh, a lot of home-cooked meals, which is, it hasn't fattened me up. So I'm still looking exactly as skinny as ever. So, so yeah, and, and a little bit more tennis. So that's good. Okay. Well, I can confirm I have been around for one of those home-cooked meals, and I can confirm that they are absolutely fantastic. Um, Sonali, uh, thank you. What, what are you doing now that you weren't doing a year ago? Uh, I think, Jasper, uh, just been the years, uh, two years that I've joined Sesame, actually been so hectic uh, that so suddenly with lockdown here in India, there was no travel. And I don't think I have stayed in one place for so long uh, since I can remember. So that's that's definite what I'm doing. But yes, I have added yoga uh, seriously to my morning routine. I, I was just eating in hotels and running around, sometimes so neglectful of, of just self-care. So now I think I've become a yoga addict. So at least four to five times a week, I just get up in the morning, uh, do my practice. Uh, so 
I, and I think that was really important because that way I just stayed uh, mentally healthy because just it was so important. And I think staying physically fit is the mantra. Fantastic. Well, I, I must say I agree. I, I've, I've learned how to cycle again. I used to cycle to school and back, and I've, I've learned how to ride, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. But then Singapore has no hills. Um, and I think I think we might have time for our, our new best friend in the world to come back and join us. Uh, is he oh there? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Mm -hmm. oh, right Mr. There. Cookie Monster. Ta -da. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you that same question, Cookie. What are you doing now that you weren't doing this time last year? Oh boy, oh boy. Well, you see, Jasper, Cookie has always been working out. Yes, you know, me a fitness freak. But now, me more into health and fitness. Now me more a fitness freak. And me also eats my vegetables and fruits and salad. You know why? Because I learned that cookies is a sometime food. So now me also meditating and dreaming of cookies uh, and me sharing cookies and recipes with my friends. And when my friends eat the cookies, me become happy and me eat one cookie, sometimes two, sometimes three, or maybe I eat up all the cookies. So that's, I think that is going to be the most in, in, important insight that we all take out for the next 12 months of our life and probably the next 52 years of our lives as well. Um, I've, I have, as ever, gone over time, but we're allowed to. It's virtual. Um, I want to thank the panel. So what we've, what we've heard, I, I've been writing some notes. Uh, on the marketing side, it's about the brand, it's about safety, and it's about the team. That was really important. Sport is all about resilience. And thank you, Tech Yin, for for those insights there. Gaming, new initiatives, growth, um, and uh, giving giving it to the, the into the hands of the creator. Uh, music, domestic co um, consumption going up, uh, talent capabilities, and the quality of music increasing in this part of the world as well. And the, the future is bright. I'm just waiting for the the, the lightning to strike again. Uh, and from the digital side of things, we we heard the family matters and that wonderful wonderful message of kindness mattering most of all. Um, and staying connected. So uh, please, I would like to thank all of you uh, for joining us today. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next uh, five days of All That Matters. Um, up next is uh, Ulla Oberman, who is the global head of music for TikTok. So look out for that in, in the Bizabo uh, system. Also, don't forget to connect. Don't forget to meet people. Don't forget to talk to people. And don't forget to watch as many sessions and interact with those sessions as well where you can. Uh, but thank you to everyone who joined the panel today. And thank you also to everyone who joined to watch as well. So uh, uh, thank you very much again. And we will see everyone all the way through till Friday. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.